And uh, this question we've had this evening from uh, the Labour lead, or more than one half of them, further highlights their utter lack of understanding about waste and recycling for a borough such as Wandsworth. Does the Cabinet member agree with me that the Labour opposition, all of them, don't need a briefing on this, but to actually gain much deeper education about waste and recycling? Councillor Sutters. I thank the councillor for his question. Yes, I absolutely agree. In fact, I picked up with officers last week that we should organise a briefing for our committee. I believe that Councillor Stock has been pushing for such a briefing and would, yes, and, and, and would benefit and would benefit from learning exactly how we do deal with our waste. So I am going to set that up and I do hope that it will be popular with all of you. Right, time for questions to the cabinet members has now finished. So we continue with report number one. On a point of personal explanation, Mr. Mayor, um, I was going to let Councillor Gibbons remark about me earlier past, the, uh, the humble act of wearing a suit, which seemed to uh, confuse okay. him. But uh, a comedy made Peter outside Graham. and the, uh, the motion that we face later, the composite motion in the worst traditions of uh, fudge and s internal strife of his own party, that do make me relevant to say this to him. Uh, it's better to dress like a city slicker from the 1980s than to have been a trade unionist in the 1980s. Well, I, I congratulate uh, Councillor Peter Graham. On, uh, took rather a long time, though. <laughs> so uh, we're Mr. now continuing with report number one, items for decision. I move reception of the report and will ask the council whether they approve the recommendations for each paragraph. Paragraph one, Council's capital strategy for 2019-20. Is the recommendation approved? Thank you. Paragraph three, public health delegations. Is the recommendation approved? Thank you. Paragraph four, pay policy and gender gap reporting. Is the recommendation approved? All those in favor? All those against? Any abstentions? The motion is carried 29 to 23. Paragraph 5, review of the Council's statement of licensing policy. Is the recommendation approved? Thank you. Labour motion. The Whips have agreed that item 21, standing up for Wandsworth against an incompetent Tory government, will be taken next. Um, this is a composite motion and Notwithstanding earlier discussions with the whips, after mature consideration, I've decided, with, a, with obviously with the voice from the council officers, etc., um, that it can only be voted on as as a composite motion, not separately in its composite parts. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I think in the parlour earlier you s you said that you would let us vote on it part by part. Uh, and the officer said the mayor's decision is final. Uh, and, and that was what we agreed coming into this meeting. I'm not on entirely sure without any conversation with myself or the other whip, why would you change your opinion at this point? The standing orders are entirely vague on this matter. There's nothing in the standing orders which says we cannot vote paragraph by paragraph on a composite motion. On a point of order, Mr. Mayor, um, I believe the group, Labour group whip is mistaken on that. Um, in fact, there is nothing in the standing orders, in particular um, under the uh, standing order 22, which uh, governs the use of motions, to say that there sh could be 
uh, individual votes. In fact, the very form in which it's put, that there is the point is the it doesn't say you can't the question or a okay. show of hands. The fact that um, there is no equivalent understanding of order fifty. Councillor Graham, sit down. Councillor Daly, sit down. Thank you. I have. I mean, I don't deny what you said, Councillor Daly, but I have considered it um, further, and my decision is that for the reason that it sets a precedent which um, could be abused, um, you know, of having a composite motion and then, you know, having it voted on in, in, in parts could, could be extended in a way which um, disrupts the business. So um, unless the council orders are altered, well, I, I mean, I admit a new mayor, and this is my last me ordinary meeting as the mayor. I mean, the uh, next mayor may, may make a di different decision. But my decision is that uh, because the standing orders are not clear on the matter, um, and I've thought further about it, um, we are voting on uh, the composite motion only. Councillor Gilbert, would you like to make your maiden speech, please? Thank you very much, Mr. Oh, Mayor. Oh, sorry, we haven't moved the motion yet. I beg your pardon, Councillor Gilbert. Um, so the motion is, well, we know what the motion is. It's, um, right, yes, we've got to move it. Right, so Councillor Hogg, will you move it? And Councillor Rigby, I believe you're seconding the motion in your name. Uh, Councillor Rigby's not here, so in fact, it's, it's Councillor Daly, I, I do recall. Seconding it, that is. I will second it on the behalf of Councillor Rigby. You're going to move it, Councillor Hogg? You've already done it, have you? Hmm. Okay. Councillor Gilbert, maiden speech. Thank you very much, Mr Mayor. I'm very proud to stand here this evening as a Labour councillor for Roehampton and Putney Heath. I'd like to start by paying tribute to my most recent predecessor, Councillor Peter Carpenter, now sitting as a colleague and one of two Labour gains last year in Putney. The theme of my speech this evening is hope. I was hopeful this time last year to be selected. Representing the ward now is a great privilege. It's known internationally by architects, planners and sci-fi fans for the beautiful Alton Estate and its brave and exemplary social housing project. It's also very well known for the fantastic university. But in many ways, Roehampton is the most challenged part of the borough. I hope that this council will address each of the issues in this motion and help my residents and those in their wards who are suffering. At this point in the maiden speech, many people reflect on why they are now councillors. And I hope you will indulge, me, will indulge me on this. In reflecting on that question, I realise that my earliest memory is actually about a local election. I was coming home from nursery when I was a very young child, when my mother almost lost control of our car in tears as she had just heard on the radio that the headmaster of a local school had been shot while teaching his class. That was my uncle. He was shot by a group who were trying to derail the forthcoming local election. Another candidate's car was bombed later that day. My point being I was exposed to politics at a very young age. I also learned a certain amount about the economy quite early on. My father lost his job when I was eight and we consequently lost our home. I am very proud of my family. They have all served the community in their work. My father was a decorated World War II veteran. He came to Northern Ireland to find work after leaving the service. But over the years, the factory my father worked in has gone. The maternity unit I was born in and in which my mother worked is long gone. The first political march I ever went on was to save that part of my local NHS. Growing up in Northern Ireland, I was surrounded by the impact of violence, prejudice and discrimination, but also a desperately poor local economy, with unemployment at almost 40% at times where I was. This was very far from the relative wealth of Edinburgh and Dublin, let alone London. Yet I always had hoped that things could be better, and they have been for 19 years since the Belfast Agreement, but this is under threat. This brings me to Brexit, which is part of Labour's motion tonight. For me, the economic and social damage threatened by this government's consistent bungling of Brexit 
its failure to plan, and its careering towards no deal, is playing with fire. Colleagues of mine tonight will say more on this, but turning to other parts of the motion, there are three key points I want to relate to my ward. My residents in Roehampton include Windrush victims who've been unable to earn or support themselves due to the hostile environment of today's Home Office. Just yesterday, I obtained a passport for one resident. This was extraordinarily difficult because of the way in which she has been excluded from public life for 10 years. I'm told that no one has received compensation yet from the government's hardship scheme. This is a scandal. The hostile environment extends to life today for the disabled. You have to witness the way in which the DWP treats people to believe it. No wonder the late, brilliant Jeremy Hardy called it the Department of Workhouses and Penury. My residents are terrified of the arbitrary assessment process and a broken benefit system. We know it's broken because over two thirds of appeals are successful. To be specific, universal credit needs to be properly funded, the system of sanctions needs to be removed, and the level of deductions need to be returned to where they were under the legacy payment system. In my work as a magistrate, I wouldn't be allowed to fine people for criminal activity in the way that the DWP seeks to punish people, and this is wrong. Last but not least, housing and child poverty. I talk to overcrowded families in Roehampton every week, and this is no surprise because it's around a third of my residents. This is an appalling statistic. Roehampton residents desperately need more council housing, and I will let my colleagues speak later on this. Many are also battling poor mental health and low pay, as well as a lack of living space. Possibly worst of all, they include parents working multiple jobs who still need the food bank to feed their family. Roehampton has the highest food bank usage in the borough and the highest child poverty rates. Nearly half the children living in Roehampton live in poverty. Where is the hope for these children? So there are two things that I have learned which I offer this council this evening. I know the importance of a safe and secure home from which people can build their lives. And I also know that extreme circumstances, particularly economic circumstances, force people to extremes into poor health and into poor mental health above all. This council must look at the casework coming from our most vulnerable residents and listen to what they are telling us on universal credit, housing, crime, the hostile environment and on Brexit. If it fails to take action on these points, it will fail to live by the warm words it uses, for example, around social mobility and supporting families. I have the audacity to hope that this council will do the right thing by residents who are suffering in Roehampton and across the borough. I hope I will be proved right. Mr. Mayor. Point of order, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor. <laughs> Councillor Gilbert, um, that was a wonderful maiden speech. Um, Indeed, it was a, a composite maiden speech, uh, admirably fit to the motion. Point of uh, order, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Standing Mayor. order number yeah. Sorry, 28. Sorry, Mr. Mayor. Yes, I believe you've called me first. I'd like to uh, yeah. propose Grimson. Uh, yeah, propose an you adjournment want? of the House. What were you looking for, Councillor Grimson? I would like to propose a brief adjournment of the House to bring attention to a, an issue which is... Have you, you got any seconders? <laughs> Pardon? Yes, it's, it's to draw attention to an issue about the way the council manages information, which I think is really getting extremely worrying in terms of the decision making which we do on the basis of. Mr. Mayor, I don't believe he has a seconder. I mean, Have we got a seconder? If I may Mr. raise Mayor, a point of order, Mr. Mayor. Understanding order 28. Councillor Lua, do you want to make an adjournment motion? I would indeed. Okay. For how long do you want to adjourn the council for, and who is your seconder? 30 seconds, Mr. Mayor. 30 seconds. Right, seconders are. Point um, of order, Mr. Councillor Mayor. An hour, an hour hasn't passed. Councillor Angela Graham. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. And I'm glad to see that you can keep time as well as I can, indeed.
believe an hour has passed. An hour? No, I, I oh, have a timer oh, set at 52. Good for you. Good at 52, for you. Good for you. you, you are five much, minutes indeed. early. Mr Mayor, I'm afraid the rules are the rules. It was 52 minutes to the Point last order, adjournment Mr. motion. Mayor. So, no, therefore, there can't Lewis. be another 20. one. Keep going, Councillor. But that's a violation Mr. of Mayor. the rules, Thank Mr. Mayor. Thank you very Mayor. much, Mr. Mayor. Um, I would like uh, to put a motion... Speak up, Councillor Lewis. I, I would like to put a motion, Mr. Mayor, to adjourn the Council for 30 seconds to take note of the considerable disruption that will affect a large number of the residents of this borough, indeed, almost all residents of this borough, from the consultation from Heathrow on their uh, new flight paths. As was already been mentioned in Councillor Cooper's question, there has been consultation to look at the new flight pass that Heathrow has uh, planned for its expansion. The expansion already has an official go-ahead from the government, and again, as Councillor Govindia said, we are already seeing the damage that this will have to a huge number of our residents, uh, most especially on the flight paths in the northern part of the borough, but now it appears this will extend even further to the southern areas of the borough, and indeed no area across this local authority will be spared, and many other authorities in central and western London. Therefore, Mr. Mayor, I would like uh, the Council to adjourn for 30 seconds to take note of this considerable uh, detriment on people's quality of life across this borough and so that we can send a message to Heathrow and to the government that this is not acceptable from this or local authority and it's not acceptable to our residents when there are perfectly sensible alternatives, most obviously at Gatwick. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I um, thank Councillor Lewis for his uh, agenda motion. Clearly, he's right in saying, and I said earlier, that um, this consultation, firstly, let me say the consultation is deficient. It's not actually engaged and involved council re residents in this borough as fully and as wholesomely as it should do. The one and single uh, uh, engagement uh, event they had was at the furthest reaches of the borough. <coughs> making it impossible for people, newly affected people in the south of the borough, to get to Rohampton, partly because there are no ways in which people from Tooting could easily get to that uh, particular location. So clearly, there was no attempt made to engage properly with our, all our residents. And then, and more particularly, I think the great issue is about the damage to the predictable respite that we currently enjoy, about an eight-hour respite, <coughs> that residents in this borough can plan for and actually enjoy. The consultation makes it very plain that that respite is going to be under threat. It is going to be cut down from eight to four. And then there are people in Heathrow Airports Limited who have a temerity to say that that is not a problem. Well, Councillor Lewis is absolutely right to say that 317,000 residents of this borough are going to be deeply, deeply and adversely affected by Heathrow. It's quite right that we draw attention to it. But in view of the hour, uh, I hope he would say that the point has been well made, uh, matters will be recorded, and perhaps we could continue with the rest of the business. Uh, Councillor, uh, are, you, are you happy not to adjourn for 30 seconds? On the basis of Councillor Govindia's comments, I am happy to withdraw the adjournment, but equally uh, to thank him for his leadership on this subject. I know that many people across this council, across the borough, across London and across uh, the whole of South East England support his leadership in, this, in opposing this decision, but I am happy to withdraw the adjournment motion. Thank you. Councillor Brin. Mr Mayor, uh, I wish to move an amendment to the motion. Um, so, in the recommendations, uh, it says, part one, currently, this council resolves to write to the Prime Minister to request that. I, I'd like to change it to uh, instructs the leader to write to the Prime Minister and her entire, entire cabinet uh, that she puts her deal before the British people for them to vote on. I'll second it. Seconded. Right, so it's seconded. Um. The original amendment as amended. Amendment as amended. So we now have an amendment to the amendment, and it, it's seconded. No, amendment to the motion. No amendment to the amendment. No amendment, to the amendment. Oh, sorry, it's your motion. That's right. Okay. It's not my motion. So I'm amending.
Councillor Hogg and Councillor Rick. You're, you're um, amending your own motion, right? No, I'm, I'm amending okay. Councillor Hogg and uh, Councillor Rick. Who do you want to second it? Councillor Quitchard is, uh, is seconding that. Fine. Can you now read out the amended motion, please? Uh, yes. So it's just part one we're amending. So now part one of the recommendation reads, uh, this council therefore resolves to instruct the leader to write to the Prime Minister and her entire cabinet to request that she puts her deal before the British people for them to vote on. Councillor Brint. No, no, the rest uh, of thank you, Mr. Mr. Mayor. Um, I have to confess, I'm a, I'm a bit confused as to how to tackle it, but it's not, not, as, not as confused as Labour in drafting it. Uh, I mean, when you read this, it really does look like you've, you've gone into a room You've thought about all the problems in Wandsworth, and after careful deliberation, you've decided it's all the Tory government's fault, um, which is sort of Labour precedent, you know, 101. And then, and then, it, and then the resolutions, as you've you've now added to brilliantly, you've given a real insight into what uh, a Labour council would have looked like had you won last year, which of course you didn't. Which is this sort of cornucopia of correspondence, which is the the action will be pretty much every cabinet minister will get a letter. And now we find out that not only will the Prime Minister get a letter, but the, all of the Cabinet members will get a copy of that letter as well. So, I mean, the, the confusion in, in your position and in your vision for Wandsworth is clear. Um, what this is not really dealing with, as we've seen, is a proper people's vote um, motion. And as a number of people who've emailed me today have asked and really expected. And, and in a way, I think that's right, that it's not. This council, this council has consistently supported, since the referendum, EU citizens in doing what we can to support them, both directly through the funding of citizens' advice. The, the, the council leader has already written to Mrs. May, Ms. Mr. Barnier, and has himself met ministers from, from the Home Office. So we've done what we can. But a people's vote debate should take place in Parliament, and if, you, if that is what you wish, and there will be many here who do, take it up with your MPs. Justine Greening and Rosina Allen Khan, both of whom I understand support a people's vote. Marsha de Cordova, I, I can't say. N nobody's heard much from her since the, um, the general election. Now, I, I otherwise have two main problems with this. I otherwise have two main problems with this. Mr. Mayor, would you mind settling them down? Because they, they, all, they have about 15 people speaking on this as it is after me. So, so OK, well, I'll come on to some truths in a moment. I think. The two main problems with it are one, are one, there is absolutely no mention, unsurprisingly, and no nuance either, of the successes of a, of a conservative government, of reducing, <laughs> of reducing a deficit, which is, which is not a unicorn, but has actually been reduced to put the economy on a stable footing, and record employment figures, not seen since 1975. But more importantly, it doesn't, with some of these, it doesn't even rec recognize some of the developments in the past two months. You talk about universal credit, there is absolutely no recognition, and why this resolution is, is meaningless, that Umber Rudd has already said that what is a very good program has, does have problems with implementation, and that's why she hasn't extended the two-child limit. That's why she's um, approved more uh, frequent funding. That's why there is an overall 4.5 billion increase um, funding in the budget. So it just doesn't even recognize what's going on. But most importantly of all, and to talk about facts, what it doesn't do in a motion entitled incompetence, it makes no reference to the towering example of incompetence that we have in this city, which is the mayor of London. And that is somebody who affects Wandsworth every day. Because it's not just about total funding, it's about how you choose to spend that money available. And every time, he puts Wandsworth second. So if you want to talk about police funding, you can you talk about the facts of why Wandsworth front counter is closed? Can you talk about why community, f community support funding has been reduced by 50%? And he would have also closed Lavender Hill Police Station if it wasn't for Conservative councillors in Shaftesbury who campaigned to save it. We can talk about transport. This is, of course, the mayor, the mayor who knew there would be a restriction in, 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 in total funding when he decided that he was going to have an uncosted fare freeze. The consequence of that is a billion pounds black hole. So when my councillors in St. Mary's Park are campaigning for Diamond Jubilee Bridge, this council has put money for it. Where's the mayor? Where's the mayor 